This is Brian Jackson from Devotion Gallery, and you're watching Wink Sound. Tonight, we're doing another Ableton user group. This workshop is around using multiple launch pads with multiple computers running Ableton Live. And the idea is to show how you can actually create instruments where you don't have to touch the computer. My name is Adriano Clemente. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. I'm from Italy, and I work here at Devotion Gallery. We have three launch pads that are running follow actions. It's more interactive than just launching a clip. You can play clips and loops and have a more detailed interaction with the audio workflow. You can start using the launch pads for more advanced workflows, follow actions, dummy clips, weird signal routings, basically whatever your imagination can come up with. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use follow actions in Ableton Live 8. Follow actions are a clip-based feature, and they allow you to specify the behavior of a clip or a group of clips. Notice that when I launch this clip, the one below it starts playing automatically after two bars. Then the one below it another bar later. Then it stops after two bars. Notice that the clip in scene five is not affected. I'll explain this in a second. To see what's happening here, make sure the launch box is visible by clicking on the little L here in the bottom left of the clip view. This top field sets the time in bars, beats, and 16th notes. The next two choosers are for action and chance. We'll come back to these in a second. So, here I told this clip to play for two bars and then go to the next clip. For this one, one bar then next. And then this one, one bar then stop. If I change this to next, it'll go all the way back up to the top. So, question here is, why doesn't it launch the two clips that are down lower here? Simple, a follow group is only clips that are next to each other. An empty slot will separate the follow group. That's how you separate clips from each other for follow actions. So let's say that I want to add some randomness. Here I'll just enter some values for follow action B, this column here on the right. Now there's a higher probability that this one will occur. By the way, the only difference between any and other is that with other, the clip will not choose itself. Like many of the features in Live, follow actions have many different applications. I use them for a couple different purposes. Now, when you combine them with other techniques, such as dummy clips or cool routing tricks, you'll see that it opens up a ton of other possibilities. Here I have an example where I've routed this MIDI clip into another MIDI track, and it has a drum rack on it. So this way I can use follow actions on the MIDI track to create fills and variations for me, so I don't have to go in and do all kinds of detailed MIDI editing. For a more chopped up sound, I use smaller values. And if you mess with legato mode, it means that the clip will start playing from the same logical position as the clip that was playing before it. So if the clip was at the second beat, then this one will start at the second beat. That way everything doesn't restart at the beginning every time. Follow actions allow us to tell clips to play for a specified amount of time, and then perform a simple launching action for us. Play around with all the different options and just have fun with it. You'll see that follow actions can be very practical or purely creative. To find out more about me or Devotion Gallery, go to learn.areyoudevoted.com. Join the conversation by following Wink Sound on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to keep up with everything you need to know about music and audio technology.